at Stuart Beam Engine Restoration Part 8. This episode shows my solution to a common problem when the slide valve is not close enough to the port face owing to general poor machining of the valve. Also in this episode there's something about colour matching the paint and a small amount of painting. Then some clips of the engine running smoothly towards the end of the video as the paint is drying. This shows the problem with the slide valve. I'm opening the tap on the compressed air supply. Then all of a sudden the slide valve slams onto the port and the engine sets off at too high a speed. I'll show the problem one more time. It's not a massive issue, but it's not as good as I'd like it to be. I would like the engine to start, irrespective of how much pressure has been applied to the steam chest. The position of the slide valve was a long way from the steam ports to start with. This existing problem has been made worse by fitting a thicker gasket between the port face and the steam chest. Here I'm using a pair of pliers just to illustrate how far away from the steam ports the slide valve actually is. That's quite a long way. As usual, it's down to bad workmanship. I could make a new slide valve, but that's not the point. This is a restoration, not a rebuild. Thankfully, I have a simple solution. I'm going to fit a shim behind the driving block, which will hold the valve slightly closer to the ports. Please don't misunderstand this. The idea is not to wedge the valve against the steam ports. It's just to move it slightly closer. I'm using a folded piece of brass, this was quite a fiddly job. I folded a piece of brass and hammered it flat. Then I bent the piece of brass at 90 degrees at each end, and here you can see it in place behind the driving block. This brass shim is not a tight fit, and it can move around, but it cannot escape because it's bent at 90 degrees at both ends. It's simple, and it's not the first time I've done this, and it's always proved to be quite successful. And it's a lot quicker than machining a new slide valve. Shims are used a lot on steam engines, sometimes on the main bearings, and as you've just seen, sometimes on the slide valve. I've even seen instances where a spring has been fitted behind the driving block to press the valve against the ports. I didn't want to fit a spring in this application, the shim will work perfectly well. Time to give it a try, I've reattached the air line, fastened it in place with a cable tie, and then chopped off the end of the cable tie so don't poke my eye with it. It's working a lot better. I opened the valve too far to start with. The good thing about the shim on the valve means that the engine will now run very slowly because with the slide valve being so far away from the port as I reduced the pressure it just fell off the port and the engine would stop. The new state of affairs with the valve is also showing a problem. The timing is very slightly out I couldn't check it at this speed before because I could not run the engine slow enough to be able to identify what was happening. What I'm doing at the moment, just for a change, is making a final tweak. Whenever you disturb an engine's settings, it's always a good idea to double check the setting of the eccentric and of course the valve position. By now it must be obvious why I fitted an Allen head grub screw onto the eccentric sheave. The slotted grub screw would have been broken by now. The owner of the engine said, would I like to paint it, and the answer to that is definitely not. This is an antique engine, it's very old, and I really don't want to ruin it by killing the patina with a new coat of paint. What I'm trying to do at the moment is find out what colour it is, and it's definitely not 1928 to 1945 Great Western Railway Green. It's actually closer to this, which is Great Northern Railway Local Green. But once again, the GNR Loco Green is not the right colour. On a piece of scrap wood on the bench is some GWR Green on the left and some GNR Green on the right. And here you can clearly see that the GNR Green is far too bright. The answer is to mix the two together until I arrive at a colour that when painted on the column doesn't show up and is totally invisible. It didn't take very long really. I'm only using this paint mixture to touch in any slightly damaged paintwork, and you must appreciate it will never look completely right until it's thoroughly dried. I'm trying a bit on the side of the cylinder and it's quite close. I know, I'll paint some on the column and have a close look at it. This is a good way of checking colours. Remove the colour from the image 
and as you can see there is no difference at all when I paint the column. I'll put it back into colour. No trickery here, I think this is the correct colour for this engine. Please be aware that in the next few clips when I'm showing various bits of the engine being painted, before painting I wiped over the area with some methylated spirits to degrease it. All I'm doing really is repairing the paint. And just like the full size, not all of the parts are painted. In this image the engine looks like it's moving around as it's running. I suppose the bearing top cap could do with tightening down a little bit. And the entire base of the engine is not exactly over tightened to the wooden baseboard. Even with the bearing top cap slightly loose as you can see here, the engine isn't knocking. And overall it's running quite well. Far better than it did when I first received it. Here was another area that required some paint. Two of the column bolts were painted and the other two had lost the paint. I don't want to make it look like a new engine, it's not, and there's a charm in the way it looks I think. The valve timing's a lot better, it's running quite sweetly now. Prior to this clip I've been running the engine very fast, and the problem with that is, all of the oil flies off the bearings, so it's a good idea after running fast to stop the engine and lubricate it. I'm using general purpose lubricating oil from a company called halletoil.co.uk. The web address is on screen at the moment. They supply all the oil you're ever going to need for running full size on miniature steam engines. The air blast from the exhaust, if you can call it that, is very even at both ends of the stroke. And that's about it. To finish off, I'm going to show various clips of the engine running from different perspectives. And I will post it back to the owner next week. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope that you found this short series useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.